Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Welcome back. So, guys, another one, another one. It's it's just amazing what we've seen this season as far as this absolute record-breaking Atlantic storm season between the tropical storms and the hurricanes. And we have Hurricane ETA. Mm -hmm. ETA, ETA. Yeah, intensifies to Category 4. Category 4, this is a major, major storm. Yeah, it's a big deal. And you know what? You don't usually see them actually hit in Central America. Usually they turn northward. It, it's typical. It, it, it just like, you know, Panama and Costa Rica almost never get, uh, you know, a storm that comes and hits them in, in Nicaragua where, where this is going to land just to the north. I feel there could be some help there. You got to wonder. You know, this this was a big, big, big one. And uh, Hurricane ETA, Etta, has rapidly intensified in Category 4, rapid intensification. How many times have we heard that? Um, a lot. A lot lately. You know, it's it goes back to Hurricane Michael, where it, that just went from, like, tropical storm to really a Cat 5. Yeah. They didn't call it a Cat 5 until way later, but it was a Cat 5. And here we have this again. And this is, you know, pretty darn late in the season. Of course, this is some of the warmest water still in there. And it's it's heading towards a potentially catastrophic landfall in Nicaragua. I mean, we're talking, this is not pretty. It's it's not a good scenario. I hope those people are getting safe. So let us, you know, send our prayers. Please, everybody, do send your prayers, your best wishes. Let's see this thing not being catastrophic, although, you know, Category 4 hurricane is, is something that's really powerful. Yeah, let's steer it away from people. Well, you know, it, and steering it is a tricky thing, too, you know, because where else can it hit? It could hit other places as well. And we're going to look at what some of the models are showing afterwards. So as of the National Hurricane Center's 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Advisory, ETA, or ETA, has maximum winds of about 130 miles an hour, Category 4, and some additional strengthening is even possible before landfall. It's going to bring catastrophic storm surge and destructive winds to northeast Nicaraguan coast near the storm's eye wall on Tuesday. At a slow movement, that's not good, through the rest of the week is likely to bring catastrophic flash flooding and mudslides from heavy rain well inland over Central America, and it became the fourth November hurricane to reach Category 4 intensity in historical records dating back to 1851, according to Colorado State University's tropical scientist Phil Klosbach. Wow. I just, I say we put in the intent to slow this thing down. Well, see, it's all tricky. Like, you slow it down, then it stays in one spot, and then everybody gets flooded with water. So, you know, it's like slow down the wind speed. Yes, that's wind shear. But then at the same time, you, like we're saying with this, it, it's right now it's going to bring tremendously high winds, as you can see what we are looking at here at My Fox Hurricane. Tremendously high winds, storm surge, rain, everything coming, making the landfall. After it makes its landfall, it'll, it should decrease in strength down in Category 2 and eventually back into just the tropical low. But they're showing it here looping back out and back out into the warm waters. And then where is it going to go after that? Hopefully out further and just dissipate. You know, out further, though, see, this is the thing. There's there's nowhere to go in, when you're in the uh, Caribbean here because everything is islands. And then, of course, you could go up into the Gulf, at which time, you know, over on this side, you know, you just don't know. This is This is... Not a good scenario, of course, for anybody in Nicaragua and then also the adjacent uh, countries next to it. And as we look at these models, they're kind of crazy. Look at this, looping out into the Pacific, coming back around back to just about the same spot over here. This is the TABD model. We look at this one and it comes back and starts going back the other way. The TABS model, I mean, these are crazy and some of these have it looping over Towards Cuba, at what point would it do what? You know, generally they don't go back out that way. They usually come towards the the north or northwest, typically, and and then when they're in the in the Gulf, sometimes and then they'll loop and get caught and start going towards the northeast. So even after landfall, 
we're still going to have to watch this for a, a day or two and see what else develops. Yeah, we're going to definitely watch that. Yeah, crazy stuff, crazy stuff we got going on. In case you guys missed it, Storm Aiden brought high waves and heavy rains to the UK and Ireland. And it caused some major havoc there. We have 8,000 homes and businesses left without power in Northern Ireland. It actually capsized some sea, sea craft and boats. Uh, and it actually caused um, some shipping containers to go flying off of other cargo ships. That's crazy. In Scotland, you had four people on board a vessel that were rescued after the ship broke down amid the storm's onslaught. And a lifeboat from Oban towed the boat to safety as the winds were gusting to around 60 miles an hour. Elsewhere, a shipping alert was issued for 33 containers lost overboard. I wonder what was on board those things. In the uh, Pentland Firth. So, you know, these storms we're seeing, they're pretty intense, pretty wild. Obviously, we've had record-breaking hail. And we had a lot of asteroids. Don't forget about the Election Day asteroid coming. Then there's that. Yeah. And now this one should skim past the Earth on the eve of the presidential election. Even if it enters our atmosphere, it should burn up because it isn't that big. It's only six and a half feet. So maybe a couple inches on President Trump. That's it. It's not going to last. It's not going to make it to the ground if it does come in. Thank goodness. Yeah, exactly. But it's just crazy the amount of asteroids we've seen. Now, over in India, it's interesting, too. We have some mysterious sounds and vibrations. You know, we've had mysterious booms that have been going on for years now. Last three years or so, we've seen all sorts of mysterious booms going on. Some people think it's inner Earth. Some people think it's blowing up the deep mil underground military bases. Um, some perhaps think that it's meteors and asteroids coming into the uh, atmosphere, or it's perhaps... Maybe it's secret weaponry. Maybe it's some of the space force, a secret space program going on. But here in India, um, you have houses cracking and rattling going on. And this is without showing, you know, appreciable earthquake activity. So that gets me wondering about expanding Earth, which we talked about last week. Yeah, it, it could be. It's, it's interesting. So strange loud sounds accompanied by rumblings and vibrations emerging from the ground are rattling residents of India since the beginning of last month. Fear and panic has already spread across inhabitants of several communities as to what is going on. So they, they report feeling frequent loud sounds from underneath the ground, followed by vibrations and mild tremors for five to six seconds that have already cracked many mud houses in the area. After being only rattled every two, three days, now the weird phenomena is occurring on a daily basis. People are even sleeping outside of their homes, fearing that a big one's coming. And so one person said, we heard a loud sound and a big jolt on Saturday. Kitchen utensils fell from shelves in several houses. Strange phenomena has created a lot of fear amongst the villagers as well. Interesting. That's really incredible. So taking a peek at the Schumann Resonance, we see we had a pretty decent spike over here. If we're looking at like the last 24 hours. And right now the power is at 61. Of course, this is reflective of our ever-changing consciousness and the consciousness of the planet as well. Yep. And then our brother Wages World had talked about a glancing CME today. And we see here from strange sounds, we're on the we're in the middle of an energy photon shower. Can you feel it? Can you sense it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> we can, um, but we we've had a busy day, so we we've already um, energetically worked on four different people and you know different locations, and we still have a few more to go after we get this video up. And the energy is strong. The energy is strong. Just it's getting more and more intense. Um, people are, well, you know, I think it's forcing us, and I was going to do a whole video on the subject, uh, to face the stuff that's buried inside of us, to let go of that which no longer serves. We could view it also as integrating the shadow self, which we'll get into in an upcoming video. Um, but at the same time, you know, this is a tremendous opportunity because, you know, our consciousness is changing. And as we've talked about before, we're re returning to the dream time as far as what the Aboriginal people say. And so we are becoming way more intuitive. 
uh, way more quote unquote psychic. Our abilities are going through the roof. Our sensitivities are going through the roof as well. People that are empathetic are finding that they're super empaths now. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> there's just so much going on. And I, I think I've slept a few hours in like the last four days. It's been just crazy. And that's what's happening with a lot of people is they're either not able to sleep or they're sleeping 12 hours and taking naps too. And so the, there's we're changing, guys. We're changing. Everything around us is changing. So we're, we're shedding this, uh, the Kali Yuga that we've been in, and that dark age is going. Um, one of our dear friends was telling us of uh, a Hindu tale of Hanuman at the end of... Um, you know, at the end of the last age, uh, you know, we're going from the, we went from the Satya into the Kali, and then out of the Kali, we'll go back to the Satya, and then we'll go into the Treta, and then we'll go into the Golden Age. Um, actually, I think I got that reversed, because Satya is the Golden Age. Uh, Dwapara, that's right, Dwapara. Bronze Age is Dwapara. So Hanuman sits down and tries to connect to Shiva, who he is actually a uh, avatar of, and he can't do it, and he's not getting an answer trying to connect to Shiva, and so he's getting worried, frustrated, and then finally he gets you know an answer from Shiva, but Shiva talks about the coming of the darkness of the Kali Yuga, and the inability to connect that that has been, what has been uh, transpiring for five thousand years, um, according to some people's dating of it. And so the good news is we're going out of that cycle. So we're going to be able to connect to the higher realms again, stronger and stronger, you know, better and better. And whether we view it as our higher selves or any sort of deity, and angels, devas, um, that's up to the language that feels most comfortable to you. But the bottom line is we could connect to the more benevolent higher powers easier as we are going up in frequency. It's all about frequency, as Tesla had said. You know, and that can be a little bit painful, too, because there's a lot of things that no longer serve us and they're going to have to fall away in order for us to raise in frequency. So this time can be very exciting, but very challenging. Most definitely it is all of the above. So we want to thank everybody that's supporting us over at Patreon and also on Ko-Fi. Anybody that needs to make an appointment, just reach us at Evolutionary Energy Arts at Gmail or E-E-A-R-T-S at ProtonMail.com. As always, guys, God bless and namaste. Namaste.